Hey, what's up guys? Tuki here, back again with another episode of Draft of Glory! All out offense. And today, we sim through another season, hopefully as quickly as possible, because we're still not at the stage where we're going to be competitive, but we are getting closer. There was a strong draft in the last episode. We have a lot of guys who are starting to take steps forward. You look at the leaders on this team right now with Mizak, Nazarov, Alex Holtz, of course, Kamel's up to an 82. It's a matter of building up the rest of the team. And obviously, you know, in, in terms of total draft luck, we've had some decent luck. I mean, we missed out on that franchise, Finn, which is unfortunate. But now defensively, we have Dowdy and Trafford. I'm not too worried about the minus three because we're going to be a bad team anyway, and they should still develop in spite of that. And then goaltending-wise, Jan Bednar as the starter. Some controversy, uh, some controversy in the last episode by not going for the high elite goaltender, which is understandable, but I do have a little bit more faith in, you know, the guys that we have in goal right now. I mean, you can really only take so many goalies, and we talked about that too at the end of the last draft in terms of taking this goaltender here and knowing that he might not be our starter at any point, but, you know, maybe potentially down the road we'll be able to get something back for him through an offer sheet. It's a tough call, though, when you have some decent goaltenders, but you desperately need position players. Goaltenders, dime a dozen. They're not that difficult to find. But in terms of building up this team, especially defensively, if there's a chance of making something happen, we have to. We have to take that risk. We have to draft those players first and hope that we do see some form of development so again overall in terms of you know how many draft of glories I've, I've run i do think we're on a pretty good pace right now it could always be a little bit better but you're not going to hit the mark with every draft pick so i i don't know i don't exactly hate where we are right now the scouting is set up the coaching staff for this season if i'm not mistaken i fired somebody i shouldn't have so our head coach this year is chung who's still pretty good but not quite as good as the guy that we had but Overall, decent coaching staff. Some of the teaching grades aren't exactly as high as I would have wanted, but we continue to cycle the staff in and out to try and make sure that we have the best coaching staff at all times that we possibly can. With that said, I'm going to sim to the end of the year because, again, there's no point in being like, oh, we might... No, we're not going to win still. It's going to be another rough couple of seasons, so we will continue to focus on the draft and have that be the highlight of the episode. 30 wins on the season. Better or worse than expected? I'd probably say better, given the lack of depth that this team, uh, you know, <laughs> given the lack of depth that this team has. This team has no depth right now. So 30 wins, all in all, it's pretty damn solid. I don't know if we were the worst team in the league, as Tampa, Toronto, Boston, and Ottawa make it out of the Metro. Philly, Carolina, New York, and Columbus make it out, uh, or, uh, make it out of the Atlantic. The Metro, this team, of course. Sorry, I made a mistake. I'm not restarting this. Winnipeg, Minnesota, and Dallas make it out of the Central. And out of the Pacific, Calgary, Vancouver, Arizona, LA, and Anaheim. You know, the four divisions. Pacific, Central, Atlantic, and Neapolitan. Uh, the top team in the league, the Tampa Bay Lightning. We were not the worst team because Edmonton exists. <laughs> Thank God for Edmonton. We were only three points back of the Blues. We actually had more wins than them, so... You can start to see, now yes, it's because other teams are struggling, but we're taking a step forward, which is very good. As Nazarov led this team in points, Alex Holtz was up there too, Kamel, Mizak uh, didn't do quite as good. I mean, I think, you know, in terms of scoring, we saw a little bit more actually out of the depth than we did in previous seasons, and as a result, the top end scoring dropped off a little bit. Trafford with 36 points as a rookie defenseman. Doughty with 30. And goaltending-wise, Sadikov did great. And an 898 for Bednar. 20 wins in 58 appearances. It's not too shabby. So, again, we're making progress. We're getting there. It's going to take a little bit more time, obviously. As Stamkos and Kucherov, the only two to break the 100-point mark, which is pretty surprising. In terms of goals, Pugliarvi with one goal in 22 games. Uh, Matt Beignets, Beignets, uh, Matt, Kravtsov and Kucherov all over 50. 
For the defenseman, John Carlson led the way. He had Sergachev, Quinn Hughes, Drew Doughty up there as well. Jake Gardner. For goaltenders, the winningest was Andre Vasilevsky, which is the least surprising thing I've ever heard. In terms of save percentage, it's probably going to be another Vesna for Vasi. And for the rookies, it is going to be Ryan Murata. 49 points. So, I mean, hey, respectable from Trafford. 13 points behind who's going to be the Calder winner as a defenseman. Not too shabby, I would say. I will say not too shabby as much as I possibly can because I'm at a loss for words in terms of how else to describe the situation. So, yeah. Admittedly, I just woke up. I have to record stuff today because, yeah, I, I got to get stuff done in advance. And that's not normally my deal, having to get stuff done in advance. I got a lot of stuff to do today. So I'm kind of thinking, like, oh, God, what time is it? I'm panicking. It's just uh, tight spaces. I don't know what I'm, I don't know what's happening. It's it's okay. I'm fine. Don't worry about it. So we will sim to the end of the postseason here, where the Tampa Bay Lightning win the Stanley Cup. How exciting for the Lightning to win! Tremendous. Who did they ultimately beat? They swept the Minnesota Wild. We almost had a 0-4 rematch. That did not happen. So Tampa wins the Stanley Cup for the second time. In four seasons, Stamkos wins an Art Ross for the second time in three. Stamkos has dominated the Hart Trophy for the duration of the series. You know what I just noticed about that picture of the Hart Trophy? That's some dude's reflection in the trophy, isn't it? Like right down the middle. That's is that's not what the trophy looks like, right? Is, that looks like a dude. Is, is am I seeing that right? I'm pretty sure there's a guy's reflection in that. Anyway, uh, the Norris goes to Sergachev. The or yeah, the Norris goes to Sergachev. Lady being there, Murata does win the Calder. Smythe went to Stamkos. The Vezina to Vasilevsky. Tampa dominance continues as Eichel wins a Selkie. Damn. In the AHL, Valentin Zikoff put up the most points. League MVP was Quinton Byfield. Most goals, Johnny Gruden. Byfield, the top rookie. Top defenseman, Connor Clifton. Top goaltender, Lucas Dostal. And the MVP of the playoffs, Greg McKegg. Joe Thornton was in the AHL. Nazarov showing up as an 84. Not too bad. In terms of looking at the winning, the winning Tampa team, I am just way ahead of myself today. Uh, you know, is it really worth it? I think we kind of know what they still look like, right? I think we have a pretty damn good idea. So what I want to do is look at the progress report. <laughs> Hello, progress. Alex Holtz is an 88. Zane Trafford in one season's up to an 85. <laughs> Absolute monster. Nazarov an 84, Camilla an 83, Dowdy still at an 82, Bednar's up to an 80, Mizak at a 79. So there was a little bit of a morale difference there. Jovokop up to a 76. And from there, I mean, still getting some improvements. Benson's up to a 70, which is very nice. Again, I always forget I can't look at when they were drafted on the screen. Nornan, Malone, feeling pretty good. Marchant is terrible, but he's up to a 64. And then in the system, of course, we have Kluchek, who was back down in the minors this year. Brody Appleby, you have Cochran as well on defense, who is just never going to make it. Uh, Castles up to a 59 at 19, so it's looking like a pretty good bet there for the goaltender that we picked up. And we have some other guys like Finneganoff. It'd be a miracle if he's ever good, but he is up, I think, by eight overall points from this first season. So all in all, pretty good. Not too shabby, some might say. I couldn't help it. I'm sorry. So let's find out. Now, I have yet to look at the draft class again. I like to leave it as a surprise for myself. The first question is uh, whether or not we're going to win the lottery. Second question is whether or not there's anybody that's even up there for us. So let's find out... We won the lottery! Fuck you, Edmonton! <laughs> Let's go! Now the question is, who's available to us? But we jump Edmonton. We have the number one overall pick. Oh god, please. Let there be, like, a franchise sniper. Oh god, please. Alright, here we go. You ready? Deep breath. One, two, three... Come on, franchise, 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 unknown Grigorenko. Okay, but we do have Cesar Garon and Kurt Rollison regardless. We need to get info 
on Vyacheslav Grigorenko. All right, so there's still a chance. No defenseman available to us here, but there's still a chance. Okay, so that's the the big question here is just how good is that guy? I'm trying to stop the sim. I knew it would get to like retired players and everything before I could though. Joe Thornton calls it a day. 1,600, nearly 1,700 points. If Kenny Malkin, Eric Stahl, Kovalchuk, Parise, Brad Marchand, Blake Wheeler, all over 1,000 career points. Pavelski was pretty close. And for defensemen, we see Duncan Keith, Shea Weber, Golagoski, Strawman, and others call it a day. For goaltenders, Mark andre Fleury, Henrik Lundqvist, Carey Price retires at just 36. Dubnik, Bishop, Halak, that's a lot of goalie talents on the way out. So in terms of staff, I'm not too worried, but we will take part in the draft interviews because we need to find out some info on Grigorenko. Why our scouts never looked at this guy, I have no idea. But we're going to see what we can find out here. And the most important thing is play style and how good he is. He is a sniper. All right, that's a good start. Readiness doesn't matter. He's a top five pick. I think we're going to know. The next uh, most important thing here is weaknesses. If he has no defined weaknesses, then he's going to be lights out. So, okay, he doesn't play a physical style. And then strengths we'll already kind of know, but we'll just do that too. So Vyacheslav Grigorenko, the top guy according to Central Scouting, is indeed a sniper. So that's promising. We just don't know what his potential is. Now, he is the number one guy for us. It's not confirmed by our uh, scout rank, but he is the number one guy. Do we know much more about him? Jesus Christ. Okay. He's probably the pick. He probably is. Although Garan crushed the Q. Whew. A plus in shooting and puck skills. Backstrom comparison. We have to take Grig though because there's a chance of him being franchised. And we don't know for sure. And then Kurt Rolison also pretty damn good. But I think we're taking the Russian. And we're going to hope that he ends up better than the other Grigorenko. Isn't that right, Buffalo fans? So he is going to be our number one pick. But the question is from there... Mainly as we head towards the second round, who will we have available to us? So right now there are 32 teams in the league. Uh, so someone like Morozov is probably going to be off the board, unfortunately. Which kind of sucks. Weakness of shot blocking. I don't know if I want to interview this guy just because it would make more sense to find out for sure about somebody else who's likely to be there. Pushkarev, four years out. All right, it's not too great. That guy's pretty much confirmed as a two-way. Sealer's close. It's a shame Caldwell is confirmed as a two-way. He's another two-way defenseman. And oh my God, why couldn't you be an OFD? Jesus, that's going to be an amazing steal for somebody. But Ruslan Loktyanov, the Estonian, could be very good for us. Brad Marshawn comparison. Let's go. <laughs> I'll take that. Uh, so Morozov, I'll, I'll pin for the moment. Pushkarev is someone else we should potentially look at. Salio is a confirmed uh, two-way forward, unfortunately. There's a DFD in Wayne Kern. I don't think that's likely to change. There's a top six grinder. We have Daniel Kahn's three years out in Oshi comparison. Two-way defenseman. Look at the grinders. Jesus Christ. There's a Brand Branden. Branden Capusta. Could also be worth it. He honestly might have to be the pick. There's a complete unknown in Jan Zednik, but I don't think he's worth interviewing. This defenseman, Sven Ledin. We desperately need defense. I just don't know about that potential, man. But no weaknesses, which is very weird. All right, who else do we have here? There's this playmaker, but he's pretty bad. Tyler Hadar. Could be decent. But I think based off of who else we have info on, I think we already know who we're going for. There's greening as well. Okay. So what we're going to do... What we're going to do... 
is try to get it confirmed as to what some of these guys are. So again, there was Pushkarev, Kahn's, Morozov, and Lokhtyanov. I can interview two of them. I don't think Pushkarev's going to be there. I hit the wrong button. I guess I could still go back, though. I hit I hit Y, and it brought me out of... Oh, I guess, I guess that brings you... Y is draft board, but it brought me back to the main menu. That's very weird. It should say calendar over draft board, shouldn't it? Am I just losing it? I might be. So the Estonian locked Tion off with that Brad Marchand comparison. I think we have to interview these two just for the chance that they're elites. So with Lochtionov, we got to confirm his ETA. We already know he has weaknesses. So let's go play style and get that confirmed. What are you? Sniper. Very good. Uh, readiness. I think, I don't even remember. I just honestly blanked on whether or not that was confirmed or not. Good thing is I can check. It's not... Let's go with readiness and strengths. So readiness four years out. That kind of sucks. Was hoping he'd be a little bit better than that. And then strengths. What do we have? All right. So yeah, it's a shot because he's a sniper. That's fine. So Ruslan Lakhtyanov might not be exactly what I was hoping for. What about Oleg Morozov? Again, he's probably not going to be there. So it comes down to cons or push I think we're good. Famous last words, but I think we're okay. So we will try to make the best of this. On the bright side, though, we do have the number one overall pick. I fully expect this guy to be a medium elite, but he is the number one projected player. There is an outside chance he's franchise. We're going for the Russian, who played in the Ukraine, Vyacheslav Grigorenko. How good are you? The point total's a bit concerning, but we're going for it. Grigorenko is the pick. Not franchise, but you can't complain about a medium elite 82 overall sniper at the top of the draft. You just can't. That is tremendous. Look at that shooting category. <laughs> Great skater as well. That is tremendous. Grigorenko, number 35 as a winger. I like it. Welcome to the team. A huge, huge addition for us. And again, we don't have the number one pick of the round anymore. That technically goes to Edmonton. So, And in terms of our choices, we... Uh, yeah, the, okay. Good God. If I took anybody else, that would have been a bit of a mistake. I mean, Garan's okay. You also have Rollis, and it's not as bad as Vegas just being like, nope, fuck it, we need a defenseman. So, very happy with that. As we get one hell of an addition to this team, it really does help to round out the top six right now that we have. And hopefully here at the beginning of the second round, a lot of medium nines as of late. Hopefully here, though, we can get another strong addition. So, again... We have Lochtionov, who is okay. There's just there's some other guys where it's not confirmed what their player types are, but it's just it's too big of a risk for me to take them. So there is Lochtionov, there's Kahn's, but Kapusta being a gem, I feel like he's the he's the obvious favorite. We desperately need defense, but I can't possibly take him over Kapusta. And then there's Markov. Greening was available, also listed as a gem. But obviously I prefer the other one who's a confirmed medium top six. Arkapov. And then Perez, Ho Perez Hogan. Dimitri Perez Hogan. If he's available next round, we'll be looking pretty good. He's also Sabrik and is probably a DFD. So it comes down to... I mean, Kahn's is the interesting one because he's in between the two. Shorter ETA. But I'd be too afraid he's a medium nine. So it comes down to Lochtionov and hoping for the best, or Kapusta, who is a bit more of a sure thing. And to be honest, it's like, okay, when when do we take the risk? Lochtionov, if he's not at least medium top six, it would be a disaster. 
But if he's a medium elite, it's a home run. My issue, though, is that there were a lot of medium top nines as of late, which kind of scares me off of taking Loktian off, because if we look at this, right? Let's see. So you have the Kings took a medium top nine. And then we go here. So it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine straight medium top nines. Loktianov might be the guy to break that run. I just, I don't think I can risk it. Risk it for a, a potential medium elite who might be a medium nine or we take a sure thing in a medium top six. We're taking Brandon Capusta. The 18 year old, it's gonna take some work, but we're going for Capusta, we're going for the sure thing. As he is a 60 medium top six. I don't hate that, it's just the question of what is the Estonian. Cardwell wasn't that good. Shugihara was great, but we knew we couldn't take him. Caldwell's a medium nine. Loktyanov was a medium nine. We made the right choice. And Salio, who was not available to us. Kern, who wasn't available to us. Cons would have been the pick, though. Medium top six and a 60. Or a 65. So technically, Cons would have been the guy to go with. Five overall points higher than who we had, but... We had to play it safe and take the short thing. And what sucks is that there's a lot of talent in the second round. None of it was available to us. So that kind of sucks. Ladine wasn't that good. So that's all right. Overall, two pretty damn good additions. The number one pick in Gregorenko and then Kapusta in the second round. Question here at the third round is whether or not we will have a defenseman available to us. And unfortunately, that defenseman I wanted is gone. He was taken at the end of the second round. How good was he? Medium top six. Okay, so we are really struggling outside of the two defensemen we've taken in the top five to get the help that we need. There's Saprikin, who I, I can't afford to risk it. There's a medium top six Norwegian defenseman and Dalton Metropolit, but again, that potential is just horrible. I mean, it's not horrible. A medium top six is fine, but it's like, really? We're, we're still aiming for... Higher than that. There's Powell, who again, I would love to take, but physical play is being up there for him. Passing ability, puck protection, and work ethic. There's a decent chance that Lars Nilsson's a playmaker, but again, I don't know if I want to take that risk. Because if he's not a playmaker, again, if I take him, he's showing up as a two-way. If I take him and he's not a playmaker, I'm not allowed to keep him. So, major risk if I ever wanted to do that. Froloff, we know nothing about. There's a playmaker here in Evan Clifford. Decent total, but not much there. Hayden Gehring is solid as an overager, but I'd rather take that defenseman. Even though Gehring's fine, it would it would make more sense to just get a defenseman who could be half decent. Same thing for Larmer. I'll actually add Gehring to the to the list. There's a potential OFD in Lou Roberts. And a playmaker here in Kirill Malkin, who might be okay. Grabowski, not looking that good. There's the sniper and Dante Tripp. Not really much there. I'm begging for a defenseman right now. We're just not finding anybody. And then Sinitsen, Bidrick Sinitsen, who isn't that great. All right, so this is uh, this is going to be a real shot in the dark pick here from the looks of it. In terms of taking a risk, this will be the time. If there was ever going to be a time. So I'm not gonna take Nelson, too big of a risk. I'm not gonna take Metropolit. So it comes down to, for me it comes down to Roberts or Malkin. Roberts because we desperately need some defensive help and maybe he'll be decent. Or Malkin because, I mean, he might be okay. I feel like we have to go for Lou Roberts. We have to. We need some defensive help. So, Lou Roberts from the Tri-City Americans. How good are you? Low 4, 63. So close to being a complete steal at a medium top 4. I'll take a low 4 defenseman. Again, I still hate low top 4, low top 6 forward potential. Like, they're just not good. But overall, I'll take it. It's at least somebody who might have a chance of improving this defensive situation, which is really what needs the most help. Nilsson was a medium elite sniper. Wow. 
Ah, I told you. There was a chance of him being a sniper, but I just didn't want to take the risk. Medium Elite 1961. Damn it. I said this might be the time to take the risk. Ultimately, we didn't. We went with Roberts. And that proved to not be the right choice. But when you see just how many medium top nine forwards there are in this draft, I don't think you can blame me for not wanting to take the risk. With hindsight, yeah, take the risk. But you think back to two minutes ago, you think of all the medium nines that are here, I, I don't I don't hate the decision to take Roberts. It's just, obviously, it could have gone a little bit better. So, we'll see who's available here. There's a low nine. Ugh. Braxton Corey. I mean, when in doubt, take the goaltender, right? That could be the way to go. What about this guy? There's no way that you're an offense defenseman. Petri Carlotti. Not looking that good. Zane Calvert has a potential OFD. Not really feeling that either. Hello, Patrick Seaback. The Seabach. Four years out. Okay. Uh, what else do we have here? Again, more low nines. It's not looking good. Korobov could be decent. He's an overager, too. That might work out for us. Oh, Valeri Kapitanov, not looking that good. Schlemko. No, he's not going to be a sniper. Maybe a power forward. Almqvist. We don't know enough about him. This is definitely not as strong of a draft as last episode. Davis Clancy, not looking that good either. A couple of grinders that aren't going to be available. And then you get into guys like Cargiulio. Miles Cargiulio, there's Murray Smith and Willie Marlowe. So this is uh, this is rough. And it comes down to Corey Korobov or Seabach. In terms of the grades, it goes to Korobov. It's just Seabach might have a slightly higher chance of being good. In terms of potential, but Korobov will have a higher overall from the looks of it. It's down to Korobov or Corey. Ah, <sighs> boy, and then there is that Allen guy there, but he's down in the 400s. I don't think his potential will be that good. Korobov or Corey. No guarantees there either. Oh, man. If Corey is really good, that's going to suck. We do still need more forward help, though. This is a fairly tough choice. We're looking pretty good for goaltenders already. But if Corey is a medium elite, that could be a gigantic steal. And then Korobov... He's 20, he's going to be a couple of years out, but he could have a medium top six. Let's just double check again who we have in goal right now. See what we're dealing with. It is... I mean, again, we have the one medium elite, and then the two medium, three medium starters, actually. I'm going to go for the forward. The goalie's probably the smarter pick. But I'm going to go for the forward. Even if that, unless that goal is high elite, that's the only way I'm really going to regret it. Mm. <laughs> Maybe not, though. We're taking Korobov. We need the forward help more. He was a low top 665. Again, not a big fan of the two potentials of the last players that we drafted. But if there was ever going to be a run where they take a step forward, this is it. So I don't hate it. It's just, you know, this one and Corey was fringe. So, yep, we made the right choice. We made the right choice. The third round pick, you could argue, okay, maybe that's where you should have taken the risk. I still say again, we made the right choice given the info that we had at the time. This time out, there's, there's no debate. We made the right choice. So, pretty happy with that. This is a pretty deep draft with all the medium nines, but there's more consistent quality rather than... You know, anybody who's outright ridiculous. So there's Murray Smith. There's Willie Marlowe, who's not going to be a playmaker if Grit's up there for him. Jalen Cox, he's not going to be a player available to us. There's a low nine. 
Do we have anybody? Harrison Nugent Hopkins? No. This is this is looking rough here. Dmitry Smirnov. Could be an OFD. His skating sucks. He's 20 years old and four outs, but he, uh, you know, four years out, but he could be an OFD. Hobby Bullen won't be. A couple of goalies. Sawyer Cornett. And Graham Locke. Eh. Yeah, this isn't looking too good. This isn't looking too good. I don't know how much we're going to be able to get out of this draft. Good old Sam Dingle. Uh, Philippi Demirs. Goal scoring shot utilization. He's got to be a sniper. Rather than a two-way. I think we have a similar situation there. Peyton Wakabayashi. Decent point total. We don't really know about the potential though. Eric Eminger is a goalie. Good save percentage. But again, like I'm hoping for more defenders than anything. And it's just not happening. And then there's Andre Palat, which, you know, maybe not the worst guy to take. So we have Wakabayashi, who's overruled. It's going to be probably a forward, although this goalie does have a decent shot. So Demir's... Probably go for Palat over him since Palat's a sure thing. All right, it's down to Palat or Smith. And again, the concern about Murray Smith is what if he is, a, you know, a medium elite. But again, we need that forward help a little bit more than we need goaltending help. So we're gonna go for Andre Palat and hope for the best. And woof, the best we did not get. With that shooting category, you had to hope for a little bit more than that. Oh, fuck. All right. That sucks. A lot. I mean, he had two Bs in shooting and puck skills. God damn it. I mean, again, we already have a medium elite goalie. Another one wouldn't have hurt. I don't regret going for, you know, more of a risk. Ferraro wouldn't have been available for us anyway. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. So, not the best luck with forwards in the middle part of this draft. And we still only have one defenseman available. Ah, fuck. I didn't think I simmed to the pick yet. At least it took a playmaker. It took Joseph, medium bottom six. Oh, it just keeps getting worse. The only thing that can really screw this up now is if it turns out there was a really good player here for no particular reason other than just to make me feel even worse about what just happened. And thankfully that might not be the case. Green Tree might be another disappointment. Okay, I don't think we botched it that much. We'll see. Let's sim to our next pick. Hopefully not make that mistake again. I wasn't used to it because, again, this is the first year that we haven't had the number one pick of each round. So, yeah, that just that caught me off guard. That was a dumb mistake. Thankfully, though, I mean, it's not like we missed out on much. Yeah, we didn't miss out on much. So, funny enough, we ended up... If anything, that just saved us time in terms of like, oh, who do we take? It wouldn't have mattered. There wasn't much there. So we go to the final pick of this draft for us. A potential goalie who I don't have too much faith in. Yeah, but Laurent Beauchemin, he's way too down there in terms of CS rank. It's just, he's not going to be good. I know that guy was listed as a gem too, but again, I just don't think he's going to be that good. When you're that far projected off the board, they never end up being good for me. Neil... Good shot utilization, but lacks offensive consistency. Uh, where the hell were they? So this guy, Kennens, was almost at the 400 mark. I don't know who the hell we're getting here, man. Denisov. Not looking too good. We have Ernesto Peacock. 17 years old, potentially. I mean, he's probably the best bet that we have right now. Or we take the goalie, Derek Like, who did have a really good save percentage, at least. Or we hope for the best with 
one of these guys having good grades, which is not going to happen. Which means we are down to Ernesto Peacock or the guarantee and Derek like. Again, smart move, take the goaltender, and it's probably going to be him because there's no way Peacock's an OFD. So we'll take the medium starter goaltender, Derek Like. He is a 49. This draft started off so promisingly, but that's what happens, right? We get the number one pick, so the rest of the draft is a little bit rocky. There isn't really too much that we could do. All in all, we still added a top player to the squad. We get a number one overall pick, and that can't be overlooked, even if the depth of that draft just wasn't exactly up to snuff. The goaltending situation is still very good. We have five guys over at least a 70, and Bednar's cracked the 80 overall marker. Defensively, though, it's rough. It's really rough, so it's no wonder as to why I took the risk with certain defensemen. Forward-wise, though, it's starting to take shape. That's a pretty damn good top five to be leading the way. But as it is, we're five years in. It's, you know, it, you're not going to build a winning team in this type of series within five years. So it's not all that surprising that we find ourselves where we are right now. But again, I still think decent start, all things considered, but... Ah, that damn, that damn two-way turn sniper. I should have gotten him.